Here I've got a nice number theory problem that comes from a mathematical Olympiad in Poland. So let's see our goal. We want to find all natural numbers that are bigger than or equal to 2, as well as all primes p, such that the sum as m goes from 2 up to n of m squared equals a power of that prime. So in other words, it equals p to the k for some natural number k. Obviously, along the way, we'll probably end up finding the k as well. But our real goal is just to find the n and the p. Okay, we'll notice that this is the sum of the first n natural numbers squared, except for the first one. We're starting at 2. So we can calculate a closed form for this using the closed form for the sum of the first n squares. And that goes like this. So let's notice that we have the sum as m goes from 2 up to n of m squared is the same thing as the sum as m goes from 1 up to n of m squared minus 1. Really it's minus 1 squared, but 1 squared is obviously equal to 1. And now rather than deriving the well-known formula for the sum of the squares, I'll leave it to you guys to look that up. I think this is a fairly well-known thing that if you're taking such an exam, you can just assume to be true. So this adds up to n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 all over 6. So just to reiterate, that's the sum of the first n squares. And then we need to subtract 1. So I'm going to subtract that as 6 over 6. Okay, next up we probably like to multiply this out. That will give us 2n cubed from this n times n times 2n. And then we'll have 3n squared. So that's from n times n times 1, and then n times 1 times 2n, that'll add up to 3n, and then we'll have plus n. That's from n times 1 times 1, and then, of course, minus 6 from this guy right here. This is all over 6. So since we're trying to write this as a power of a prime, it stands to reason that this numerator probably factors. If it doesn't factor, then it's probably not enough, there's probably not enough structure to answer this question in the first place. So if it factors, that means it probably has a natural number as a root as well. Well, let's notice that 2 plus 3 plus 1 is 6, minus 6 equals 0. That tells us that 1 is a root, and so we should be able to write this as n minus 1 times some quadratic polynomial all over 6. Okay, now what's that quadratic polynomial? Well, we can kind of guess and check until we have it. We know it has to be of the form 2n squared because we need a 2n cubed here. We need a plus 6 over here because we need a minus 6 here. And then you can check that in the middle we'll need plus 5n. So we've got some sort of setup like that. So just to reiterate what we've done, we've taken our goal object on the left-hand side and written it in this closed, like, kind of polynomial form. Okay, let's bring that over here, and then we can keep going. Up to this point, we've taken our sum and written it like this. So it's n minus 1 times 2n squared plus 5n plus 6 all over 6. And let's recall our goal is for this to be a power of some prime p. Okay. Well, notice that that means that we could multiply both sides of this by 6, and we've got this cubic polynomial which is factored is equal to 6 times p to the k. So in other words, we have n minus 1 times 2n squared plus 5n plus 6 must be equal to 6 times p to the k. And this factorization over here gives us some motivation to look at the possible greatest common divisor of n minus 1 and 2n squared plus 5n plus 6. And we can do that just using division of polynomials. So if we take n minus 1 and we divide it into 2n squared plus 5n plus 6, let's see what we get. So the first bit that we'll have is a 2n, because we need to achieve 2n squared. That'll put a 2n squared here, a minus 2n here, and then we'll subtract that, 
So that means the 2n squareds will cancel and this will build up to be a 7n plus 6. Then we clearly need a plus 7 here to achieve a 7n. That's going to give us 7n minus 7. Again, we'll group and subtract, leaving us with a remainder of 13. So what that tells us is that 2n squared plus 5n plus 6, maybe let's put that we're noticing this right here, is equal to n minus 1 times 2n plus 7 plus 13. So let's suppose that we have d, which is a common divisor of n minus 1 and the other term right here, 2n squared plus 5n plus 6. In other words, it divides the greatest common divisor. Okay, so if d divides both of these, then that means that it divides their difference done like this. But their difference like this is 13, so d divides 13. But 13 is prime, that tells us that d is equal to one or d is equal to 13. So the only possible common divisors of these two terms are one or 13. That tells us that the only possible greatest common divisors of n minus one and two n squared plus five n plus six is one or 13. And now we'll work through both of those cases. We've made some headway. So we rewrote our problem as follows, finding when n minus one times two n squared plus five n plus six equals six times p to the k, where p is some prime. Furthermore, we determined that the GCD of n minus one and this quadratic was either one or 13. And now we're gonna look at each of those cases separately. So our first case is when the GCD of n minus 1 and 2n squared plus 5n plus 6 is equal to 1. This is going to break down into two subcases. So let's write that. So subcase number 1 is if n minus 1 divides 6. And then the second subcase will be if n minus 1 does not divide 6. So notice that this right-hand side is a multiple of 6. That means this left-hand side has to be a multiple of 6. That means that it's possible for this n minus 1 term to contain some parts of that multiple of 6. Okay, great. But if n minus 1 divides 6, that tells us that n minus 1 comes from a fairly small set of numbers, 1, 2, 3, or 6. Those are the only divisors of 6. But that tells us that n equals... But that tells us that n comes from the set 2, 3, 4, or 7, just by adding 1 to everything in that 4 element set. Now, there are only four numbers here, so we might as well just try them one at a time. So let's go n equals 2. And instead of working with this up here, we'll just play the game over here with our sum of squares. So notice if n equals 2, the starting and ending point of our sum is the same. So we're just ending with 2 squared equals 2 squared. So in other words, we have n comma p are both equal to 2. So we have 2 comma 2 as our ordered pair of solutions. Okay, now let's look at the n equals 3 case. So in that case, we have 2 squared plus 3 squared. But that's 4 plus 9, that's 13. So here we have an ordered pair of solutions of 3 comma 13. So 3 is our ending point, and 13 is whichever prime that we're having a power of. Okay, now let's look at the n equals 4 case. So there we have 2 squared plus 3 squared plus 4 squared. That's 13 plus 16, which is 29. That gives us a solution as well. Our solution here is 4 comma 29. It's because 29 is a prime. And then for the n equals 7 case, as you can see, you do the same sort of calculation. I'll let you guys check that and maybe put in the comments whether or not this gives you a solution and what the associated prime is. Okay, so now let's move on to our second subcase built out of this first larger case where we assume these guys are relatively prime. So, like I said, subcase 
2 will be that n minus 1 does not divide 6. So that gives us the following possible values of n minus 1. So n minus 1 comes from the set p to the k, 2 times p to the k, 3 times p to the k, and finally 6 times p to the k. The important thing here is that n minus 1 contains a factor of this prime. You might say, well, how do we know that it contains all of the factors of this prime? Well, if it didn't, then there'd be leftover factors of this prime that would be divisors of 2n squared plus 5n plus 6, and thus these guys would not be relatively prime. But now let's notice that in all of these cases, we have n minus 1 is bigger than or equal to p to the k. But if n minus 1 is bigger than or equal to p to the k, then that means that 2n squared plus 5n plus 6 is less than or equal to 6 because that's building up the rest of this product right here. But we have a problem here because when n is bigger than or equal to 2, we see that 2n squared plus 5n plus 6 is most definitely strictly bigger than 6. So we've reached a contradiction. Notice that these two guys right here are contradictory statements. So that means some assumption that we've made in the past must not be true. And that assumption is right here. This fact that n minus 1 does not divide 6. So that means this subcase is not valid, which means this first subcase that we worked on is the only one that's valid in this relatively prime bigger case. All right, good. So let's maybe get rid of the bottom part of this board and we'll look at our second case when the GCD of these two is equal to 13. Now we're ready to finish this off by looking at the case when the GCD of n minus 1 in this quadratic is equal to 13. Well, if their GCD is 13, that means their product is a multiple of 13. That tells us this prime right here must be the number 13. So we can simplify our problem to determining the values of n when this product is equal to 6 times 13 to the k. Okay, so let's make that simplification and then move on. Okay, so now that we've done that, we know that n minus 1 should be able to be written as a times 13 to the x, and then 2n squared plus 5n plus 6 should be written as b times 13 to the y. And here we have a times b is equal to 6, and x plus y is equal to k. That's pretty obvious just by our construction of this number right here. Okay, good. Now we're going to look at some subcases attached to this setup. So our first subcase will be if x is equal to 1. And then our second subcase is if x is bigger than 1. So this case when x is equal to 1 means that n minus 1 is equal to 13 times a, where notice a times b is equal to 6, that means that a divides 6. So in other words, a comes from the set 1, 2, 3, and 6. But now plugging these values of a up here, we see that we only get the following possible values of n. So n is equal to 14, 27, 40, and 79. And now we need to check each of these individually to see if they achieve this goal. So let's just write down what happens if n is equal to 14, and then you can check the rest. We don't actually get any solutions for either any of these last cases. Okay, plugging n equals 14 into this up here, we'll see that we get 5, 3, 1, 7, which in fact factors as 13 times 409, which is most definitely not of the form 6 times some power of 13. These are two distinct primes. So that tells us that no, we do not get an extra solution when n is equal to 14. And then the game is just to try each of the rest of these individually. Okay, so I'll let you guys do that and let's move on to this next subcase which is when x is bigger than or equal to 2.
And let's notice if x is bigger than or equal to 2, then we immediately know that y must be equal to 1. You might say, how do we know that y is equal to 1? Well, if y is not equal to 1, then the GCD of these two numbers is at least 13 squared, but we know it's 13 to the first power. So put another way, we know x or y is equal to 1. But now if x is bigger than or equal to 2, that tells us that n minus 1 is bigger than or equal to 13 squared, which is equal to 169. In other words, n is bigger than or equal to the number 170. But that's definitely problematic because if n is bigger than or equal to 170, then that means that 2n squared plus 5n plus 6 is also most definitely strictly bigger than 170. Wow, we also know that 2n squared plus 5n plus 6 must be less than or equal to 6 times 13, given that it is of this form and that y is equal to 1. But just as we saw in a previous case, these two inequalities cannot exist together. So here we have an impossibility, which means some assumption that we made in the past must be false. What's the assumption? Well, it's this assumption right here where x can be bigger than or equal to 2. So that means x must be equal to 1, which means what we really need to check are these last three cases and then be done. And that's a good place to stop.